the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hi guys and welcome to this video tutorial on footnotes and endnotes in Word. Now footnotes and endnotes can be used in a Word document to explain or provide references to or comment on something that you've mentioned in the document. So they really help provide additional information that doesn't necessarily need to go in the main body of the document but nevertheless is important to know. Now the difference between the two is that footnotes will usually appear at the bottom of a page whereas endnotes will tend to come at the end of the document or section. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you examples of how you can enter both of them into a document. So let's start out with entering or inserting a footnote. So the first thing you need to do is you need to click where you want to add a footnote. So it might be that I want to add a piece of additional information about this title here, Game of Thrones. So I'm going to make sure that I've got my cursor clicked just before where it says Game of Thrones. I'm going to jump up to the References tab and there is a group here called Footnotes. And what I want to do is select the Insert Footnote option. And immediately that jumps me down to the bottom of the page and it gives me a number one. And if I scroll up, you can see that I now have a number one next to Game of Thrones. So it essentially indicates that there is additional information about this particular point. So what I can now do is I can enter in that additional information. So I'm just saying that the source for this information is Wikipedia and I'm adding that in as a footnote. Now you can add as many in as you like, but bear in mind you don't have a great deal of space down here, so I wouldn't start trying to add 20 of them, but for two, three or four points this is absolutely fine. So I'm going to now jump down to cast and characters and I'm going to insert another footnote. This time I have a number two appearing just here and I'm going to enter in my additional information. And there we go. So it's a really nice, neat way to add in that additional referencing information. Now, if you want to get back to that particular point, within the document, then you can double click on the footnote number and that's going to jump you back to the point that it relates to. So now if I hover my mouse over this number one, you're going to get that little screen tip pop up, which is actually going to show you the footnote. So you don't essentially have to scroll down to the bottom of the page in order to see the footnote. Now in my footnotes group up here, you can see that I have a little option which is going to allow me to navigate through the document by my footnotes. So if I want to jump to the next footnote, I can click next, it's going to jump down, and I also have an option to go to the previous footnote as well. Now I'm going to scroll down and we're going to go to this page just here. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to add an end note. So these differ from footnotes because they appear right at the end of the document. It doesn't matter which page you add them on, they're always going to be on the last page of the document. So I'm going to click where I want to add my reference mark. I'm going to go up to that footnotes group and I'm going to say insert endnote. And you can see I get a slightly different format here. I have Roman numerals as opposed to numbers and this is where I can add in my endnote. like so. Now it's worth noting that you can actually customize or make changes to the way that your footnotes and your endnotes look. So again, if we go up to our footnotes section on the references ribbon, we have this little diagonal arrow in the bottom right hand corner. And this is going to take me into my more advanced options for footnotes and endnotes. 
So you can see it's currently selected EndNotes and it's saying to me they're going to appear at the end of the document. But I could choose if I wanted to, to display them at the end of the section instead. I can choose the kind of layout I want for my footnotes, so one column, two column, three columns, so on and so forth. And this is quite useful if you have quite a lot of footnotes or endnotes because you can put them into columns and they will take up less space. You can choose your number format, so this is why I have Roman numerals because that's what's set in this number format area. But if I wanted to, I could change that back to one, two, three, so that they're the same as the footnotes. I can choose to add a custom symbol in there if I wanted to, and I don't necessarily have to start my numbering at one, I can choose whatever number I like. And when it comes to numbering, you have a choice of continuous or restart at each section. So if you have a document that has lots of sections, it might be that you want your footnotes or endnotes to continue through with the numbering or essentially restart new numbering with each section. And all of my changes are gonna be applied to the entire document. I'm going to select apply and you can see that that one change that I made has now taken effect and I now have the number one as opposed to a Roman numeral. So once you've added your footnotes and your endnotes into your document you can then go through and you can print your document and you'll see that by default those footnotes and those endnotes will be printed when you send your document to the printer. So that is it on footnotes and endnotes, very straightforward. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.